Right, hi there, welcome to a new video. Um, so what you can see here is me working on page, I want to say it's 15, it's either 15 or 16 of uh, Any Key Press's new production, which is called Windbreaker. And in this sequence, our hero has landed in Japan and he's off to interrogate the contact for some information. Now this is uh, this is not the actual draft that was written in the script. Uh, this page was actually rewritten very much on the fly uh, when I came to draw it. And it's a strange um, sort of thing that happened. And I, was, I want to talk about it a bit. A bit. Um, so in the original drafts, multiple drafts, um, our hero gets off the plane, gets into a taxi, instantly makes the taxi driver as his contact. Which sort of took all the suspense out of it, and also it, it meant that the taxi driver's job was to provide exposition and also getting from the airport to uh, the next location. And that was fine, and it sort of worked. And we've seen we've seen things like this in other uh, films, but I kind of wanted to do something different with it when I actually come to draw it. I drew it out, and it looked, it looked kind of dull, and uh, it occurred to me that really taxi driver, which you know, we can pick up as an extra, he needed a voice and that's kind of what we're going to talk about today, just briefly. Um, so everyone talks about, when they talk about writing, everyone talks about finding your voice and when people talk about writing characters, they talk about having uh, unique voices for their characters and you can see it in a lot of comics. If you take a, an ensemble group and uh, a, a panel where they've all got dialogue. For some comics, you can swap the dialogue around and it doesn't matter who's saying it. And that's not great because you might as well, why have what, five characters that all sound the same? You might as well have two or, or three. You know, save yourself some, some, some drawing. So I think it's really important that if you've got an ensemble cast of characters that they have a unique voice, that they would say things uniquely to them, you know, in their own way. And I've done it in the past, I've, I've had characters that were very rambunctious, or characters that were very sort of quick to anger, um, and I'm not sure why I didn't write this character to have, well, character. So when I came to look at this page again, I realised that we could have some fun with this secret spy. Um, this new spy, his uh, the contact is a you know, it's the first field assignment, which as same as the uh, same as the script. Um, so now we've we've written him to actually pick him up at the airport, and um, it's not very subtle. Got a great big cardboard sign. He's shouting, he's waving. When he actually meets um, John, he's sort of hopping from foot to foot going oh my gosh you're like the best secret agent I've ever met I read all your field notes you're you're you, you you're great at you know at being a spy which is kind of not what you want to it's kind of it's the one thing you don't do when you're a spy is to tell people that you're a spy so I it, it was it allowed for some comedy it allowed for something to actually happen um, in acting circles um, you call that like business you know some business for them to do not just sit in a car and drive and this this page still ends the same the car driving off the page to the next location we've just made this character a lot more interesting um, and I think that's what giving a voice to a character actually does um, so let's see where we are with the drawing yeah so he's gone very sort of Hyper excited to see his first field agent in the flesh on his first mission. John's got to try and calm him down. There we go. I'm writing a big shh. We have a, a, a sort of light, a wider panel. Um, where it looks like the agent is now crestfallen because he's made a kind of a schoolboy error, and uh, yeah, 
is, is, is uh, upset, maybe even slightly ashamed at that. So this character's now saying things with a voice and acting, you know, we're acting with this character, we're making him do appropriate things. And, uh, as a result, I'm having to rewrite the script for this. So I'm writing the dialogue in and then going back to the script and making a new revision to the script to actually put this into the page. It's not normally how I'd write a script. Normally a script would be written, drafted, redrafted, the final script is done and that's what gets written. So, you know, this time I'm this time the rewrite is happening pretty much on the fly. And it does present a problem because I write to a page count, so I sort of have to um, maintain what happens on that page. So the end result is, yeah, you know, for the page, he lands in Japan and then starts moving towards the location he needs to go to. In the next page, he reaches his location. So by the end of this page, we have to see him drive off in a car. So yeah, so that we can see him arrive at the next location at the start of the next page. So. We're, we're, we're changing our shots up a little bit um, and we're not worrying about um, we're not worrying about establishing the car the meeting at an airport terminal of course they're gonna get in the car and of course he's gonna drive because he's his contact and also he knows the location so this is all sort of very straightforward sort of by the numbers stuff I've never had to rewrite, I've never really rewritten like this before, and I'm just curious, uh, writers, artists, and writer artists, if you ever had to do this, do you ever find yourself rewriting a character, giving them more to do because you've written them as a function, not as a character? And I think you can have characters that work purely as a function, so they just, their job is to just walk behind the, walk behind the background, you know. Uh, and then you get then you get background characters that are minor actors. They ha they perform a function. Something to think about. Uh, anyway, I've rambled long enough uh, on this topic. So like, comment, share, subscribe. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Um, and we'll see you in the next one. Okay, take care. Right, bye now.